people, welcome back to the Win a Pageant podcast. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby, and in today's episode, you will have the opportunity to meet Jonathan Kane. Now, Kane Gillespie, he is one of my favorite fashion designers ever. I've worn a lot of his wardrobe on stage. I just think it's totally spectacular. So in this episode, he's actually going to share with you some sneak peeks of some of the wardrobe that's going to be coming up in the 2018 line. So a lot of behind the scenes there, that's very fun. And we're also talking pageant shoes. So what are the best shoes to wear with which outfit, like which phase of competition? And so he's actually showing you the shoes that are best for what and explaining why they're his favorites and what little elements about them make them perfect for pageantry. So we geek out on shoes a little bit in this episode, so just be prepared. <laughs> and then we also, what's interesting is he also shares with me the difference between prom pageant and red carpet attire because some of the things are very similar some of the things i learned are very different so he's going to share that with you in this episode and so much more so without further ado please welcome jonathan king hi kane welcome to the win a pageant podcast it's such a pleasure reconnecting with you likewise sweetheart thanks so much for having me on yes this is so fun so you and I first met in, I want to say 2012 or something. It was like five years ago. Yeah, it, it might have been further back, it I could feel be. like. I, it was a while ago. You probably know better yeah, than me, I think. Yeah, and I, I recall it was through a mutual friend, Ronnie Weaver, in Pennsylvania. Good old Pennsylvania. And the bridal yes, yeah, dear friend. Yes, absolutely. And so I, at the time, was competing in the Miss America system and had a talent. And... I will never forget the incredible costume. My talent at the time was like a like a lyrical, and then I had a tearaway skirt that you created for me in this, and oh, it yeah. revealed these like saucy, like lime green bo boy shorts underneath. I was like, this is awesome. And it turned into like a techno dance. And so that really, really lit me up. And I fell in love with your designs, have worn many a Jonathan Kane across the stage. So it's such a pleasure to reconnect with you. Likewise, sweetheart. I, it's so fun to follow you and see everything that you're doing. Yes. Congrats on Thank you. podcast. Being now a married woman and, and such a great businesswoman, I'm very, very proud uh, of you to see. Thank you. I so appreciate hearing that. So for those of, you, of uh, our listeners who don't yet know you, could you share a little bit of your background and kind of what led you to do what you do so well today? Sure. Yes. So, okay. So it all kind of starts with growing up here in Nashville, Tennessee, where I live now, and growing up in a very um, lower middle class family with five sisters and two brothers, and then myself fitting in there as the second to the youngest. So I was, I was raised by very strong, powerful women. Uh, my mom, my stepmom, my grandmother. Uh, Dolly Parton is kind of like one of my heroes, but we'll get into that later, I'm sure. But, um, but and then growing up with my sisters, it really kind of taught me that uh, everyone's beautiful and women are such beautiful, gorgeous, amazing creatures. And so I loved helping my sisters and my mom uh, not only look beautiful, but feel beautiful, whether they were just throwing on clothes to run to the grocery or, um, or just Braid, helping braid their hair. I was a Tom girl. They were Tom boys. So <laughs> now we met in the middle. Um, but, you know, that was kind of how I got started and really wanting to uh, to empower women. And then flash forward, I uh, switched my major from pre-vet to fashion design and got my degree in New York City. Ended up having a couple of successful retail evening wear stores and did Project Runway. And now I have a brand. So it's that's kind of like a quick little synopsis. Yes, that's perfect. Yeah. And I love that that kind of growth pattern that you shared because you're right that, you know, it's so interesting when we grow up and we have these sort of like a calling that we don't really get to step into until we've got the knowledge and skills. And I'm wondering, did you always sort of know that you would be in the design industry or did you just have like a hint of it or maybe none at all? You know what? Not it's that's a great question. None at all. Like literally, I grew up quite poor. So like we had hand me down clothes. We had my grandmother made some clothes. Um, a lot of our clothes came from Target, Walmart. Not that anything's wrong with those, but it wasn't designer, you know, goods. Uh, and even still, I love thrifting. I love finding beautiful clothing and finds um, from all different types of places. 
but uh, I didn't really know until I started um, as a sketch artist at a small Edinburgh boutique in Nashville where uh, two of my sisters that competed in scholarship pageants, the Miss America organization and stuff like that, uh, where they got their gowns. My stepmom started as a seamstress there to help doing, you know, minor alterations uh, to help pay off some of my sister's pageant wardrobe so that they could win scholarship and put themselves through college. So, um, so I helped around in that, and I was very big into art in uh, high school and all throughout Illinois, and, um, but never, never thought dreams fashion was in my future until uh, probably I was like 19 years old and graduated high school and uh, I just in working at the clothing store, I loved it. I quickly became a buyer and traveled all over buying uh, clothing for our evening wear boutique and uh, met designers and uh, stylists from all over the world. And they, you know, several of them kept saying, so you're a designer, right? And I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm going to be a veterinarian. And after hearing <laughs> a veterinarian? That, yeah, after hearing that, I was like, maybe I should think about this fashion design stuff. And um, then next thing you know, I was transferring colleges into the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York and had an amazing experience there. And the rest is kind of history. Oh, it's so cool to hear the background. You know, it's interesting when you book a gig like Project Runway, everyone I think tends to kind of look at you as like, oh, he's totally an overnight success. Like that show just catapulted your career. but. What's interesting is when you hear the backstory, and I think this goes for most of the greats, everybody has a really intriguing and, and kind of like a roller coaster experience leading to what is true success. Can you share a little bit about how your brand has changed and developed over the years? Oh, sure. Yeah. When I first got started, first off, I had a very small retail store in Nashville um, after design school, and I was making a few pieces in there uh, in my little boutique, and it was in one of my best friend's hair salons, and I was fortunate enough that he uh, had already built a great business with a lot of the country music scene, and so I had you know some of these local celebrities and national celebrities coming in to get their hair done, and then I had a boutique there where I was sewing and making things. And um, at that point, I was making everything myself. I didn't even have a label in the things I was making. I would just sign the inside of the lining, oh. uh, the garment, the gown, whatever I was making. But, you know, I, one thing I found and learned early in my career is that women will buy the right dress out of the trunk of a car if they have to. They don't care. <laughs> if it's a great dress, they're going to buy it. So whether it's, you know, at... Uh, Bergdorf Goodman or at a pageant salon or something like that. But um, so I had a great business there. Then I followed love to Oklahoma and um, bought a clothing store there, closed my store in Nashville. And, um, you know, it, building my business there, it was more retail. And I made maybe 20 garments a year. But I really started building my pageant business once again, which is what I kind of loved and knew. I had so much mad respect for girls and uh, everything that they do, not only to be successful in school, but in their personal lives, and then the extracurricular things as well, like pageants and stuff like that. So, uh, so I had a, I built a very huge pageant following I think because I just love working with women and making them look and feel absolutely incredible. And um, from that point, I had a ton of prom gowns, gowns to pageant girls, um, and building that those relationships to where. You know, within a few years, I had dressed the entire top five at Miss Oklahoma USA and then the entire top five at Miss Oklahoma Team USA. So um, it was like I started getting this cult following of girls that uh, wanted custom gowns. And um, from that, uh, I really learned a lot about how to sew and how to create and design and fit things that look good on a woman's body, not just from the front, not just from the back. They, You know, on stage, you're judged from every angle. So it's a 360 degree judgmental process, really. That sounds awful, but it's true. So, um, so the gown has to fit and be flattering and look great. And uh, from that, I ended up uh, auditioning for Project Runway, um, season three, back in the dinosaur years when it was on Bravo. And um, I ended up making it on the show, season three, ended up winning the Miss USA Challenge, where I designed Tara Connor's dress for Miss Universe. We went on to place top five at Miss Universe. 
Um, and I ended up going on to place top five in the show. And um, it just, it really, that overnight success took about nine years of, <laughs> of design and making things and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, even still, it wasn't a situation where I had opportunities knocking like crazy. You have to take advantage of the time period and timing is everything. So for me, I created, right after I was off the show, it never mass produced anything in my life. I was only making custom one of the pieces. And um, I made a, a collection of 17 gowns, took them to market in Atlanta, where I had only bought before, never showed any garments, and um, was hoping to sell just a few gowns. And I ended up selling over 150. And luckily, from being at that market, I uh, got hired by a prom company that had mass production factories overseas, as well as Benjamin Law, the shoe company that I still design for, the Jonathan King line of shoes. So it's kind of changed from me making everything. That was a long answer, I'm sorry. Kind of changed from me making everything to me making very few pieces um, and then mass producing so that more people can afford my. I'm curious to hear from your perspective. You mentioned pageant, prom, and now I know that you are actually wardrobing a lot of people, celebrities that are walking on red carpets. And I have a feeling that there are some, maybe some similarities between all of these, but maybe also some differences. Can you share a little bit about what are the keystone differences between prom, pageant, and red carpet? For sure, that is a great question. So um, for prom, it is really, you have to think about the time period in a young lady's life. Of, of, this is sometimes the first time that they've ever gotten all dolled up in a gown. So you want to think that it's it's very um, beautiful, that it fits her well, that it, um, you know, a lot of young women are still figuring out their bodies and a little insecure. Um, and, you know, so you want it to be very flattering, appropriate, supportive. You don't want uh, a young lady pulling at her gown. You don't want it to be um, too daring or too... Um, risque, I guess, because it's one of those things you really want to kind of ease into, like, your womanhood. And I feel like a prom gown, um, perfect prom gown can mimic what's being worn on, on the red carpet, but definitely give a little bit more um, of that wholesome edge to it. And then also, um, you know, you really want it to be a price point that's really affordable. So uh, you may not have a couture fabric or a silk chiffon, even though we do have a couple of silk chiffon gowns in our line that are retail at about $500, not too crazy, but our average price point, our collection is about $400 to $450. Um, so we're not the cheapest, but we're definitely not the most expensive. And we have things less than that. We have dresses starting at $280. The price point kind of really has uh, some restrictions on um, what we can design for prom dress. Uh, but then you go on to uh, the pageant girls. And the difference with that is sometimes there's some increased uh, construction that is going to exaggerate a girl's waist or maybe make their bust line look a little fuller or um, sometimes smaller. And sometimes you want uh, the construction of a gown to minimize your bust if you have a really large bust. Um, and you always want a pageant gown to be flattering, to be a beautiful color with your skin tone, your hair color, your eye. Um, but the main things are going to be the fabrication, the construction, and the beadwork may be just a little bit more elevated. And then for a red carpet gown, honestly, it's so weird. I'm still learning more about the red carpet world, but um, I, can't, I can tell you I've honestly dressed prom gowns on Randall Lambert for a red carpet. But it was just the right gown. It didn't have a single bead on it, but it was a gorgeous black and white ball gown, and it was, it was perfect for her event. So what I found is a lot of these celebrities, you think, oh, my gosh, it's unattainable dresses that people can't afford. But my collection retails for um, most of my dresses are under $1,000 retail. And um, most people, celebrity or prom girl, can afford that $300 to $800 range if it's the right dress. So, um, so really, red carpet can be super expensive. It can be exclusive and high-end designer. And we have some of those things that are one-of-a-kinds here, too, or I make them one-of-a-kind. Those are the main differences between, between each of them, construction or design. That's great. Wow. Thanks for explaining that because it does help clear up a lot about the, what should I wear for this? What should I wear for that? So that helps to know just from an actual designer's perspective, like, okay, here, here's what to know, you know? So that's so helpful. Thank you for that. 
my pleasure. Um, the big thing, yeah. the big thing to keep in mind is what feels good. That's what my biggest advice for girls is don't get caught up. Is this in a prom line? Is this in a badger line? If it feels good, wear it. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely huge. Cause you're right. When it feels good, then you feel beautiful. That's what makes you feel like confident and want to rock it. And you walk different and you carry yourself differently. And yeah, completely different experience. So I love hearing you say that. So let's talk shoes. When I competed in pageants, I only wore your shoes. I couldn't stand any other shoe. I thought they were uncomfortable. I still to this day tell all of my clients, listen, you have to get the Jonathan Kane shoes. Uh, and you're constantly coming out with new designs and uh, new ways to wear things and different. So let's talk. I know you've got some samples there that you can show us as well. Uh, so show us. What have you got? And what do you recommend that they be worn for? Perfect. Okay, so my first shoe that I'm going to show you guys is actually I named it after my mother, Judith. So this is the Judith, and it is a very nice, creamy, um, kind of like a patent leather, simple strap. One thing that's notable about all of our shoes is when I first started designing, having five sisters, I was like, how can I make these shoes better? So we tripled the padding in our shoes. So I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Thank you for but doing that. <laughs> I know, right? Pageant women around the world are applauding you. <laughs> so my important. Name my mom because my mom was a little bit you know more simple unfortunately i lost her a year ago last may not this past may but a year ago but um i wanted to do something luckily i was able to design this for her before um she passed but anyway not to bring the mood down so this is uh the judith and it's great for appearances or for interview if you can do open toe for interview but it's just a great shoe i've had this on the red carpet um cma awards and cmt awards and acms and all that stuff because what's great about this shoe is it just blends with your foot it's barely there with just this one vamp strap and a tiny little ankle strap and it's not too hot yeah. so that's the judith that's great for interview or appearances yeah I love, and that's that's the kind of shoe every woman needs in her wardrobe like you have to have that one. I, uh, Luciera has always said, when you find the perfect beige shoe like that, get two. One that you're gonna wear on pageant and one that you're gonna wear out because you're gonna want to, you know? It's so true. And one of the big trends, I'll give you guys a little sneak, uh, yeah. little info. Okay. This shoe, we're actually doing it in, one of the big trends in footwear right now is velvet shoes. So we have this shoe coming this next season in velvet and it is, beautiful i wish i had a sample here to show you. oh i can so. only imagine that would be beautiful it's good all right so go on to swimsuits yes. so one of my top selling swimsuit shoes and there's varying um opinions on if you should wear a platform or not i think if uh if you're comfortable wearing a platform and it feels more comfortable and you like the look it does give the leg a longer look and can make you look taller especially in a comparative lineup on a pageant um, but is the suntan. So this shoe, yeah, That's got this a good shoe, size platform. <laughs> it actually is not that high on the arch. So it is very easy to walk in. All my models at market, they model in this one and they say it's so comfortable once again with all of the padding and then this clear acrylic supportive strap. I don't know. Yes, if you can I love that. It's really good because you don't see any straps on the foot. I'll take that little deal out. Okay, yes. So on the foot, it really is kind of hard to see. Oh, yeah. But then you get that nude extra supportive strap in the back. Oh, that's beautiful. And that, again, hiding that strap in the front helps to elongate the leg as well. So I love that design. Well, thank you so much, Alicia. Yeah. And then another platform, I'll cover this one real quick. This is actually named after one of my uh, employees, Nakona, who has been with us. So this is the Nakona, another nude platform, um, just covered in the um, the nude patent leather PU uh, fabric and all the padding, but it's just strappy, no clear acrylic on that one. But it's also a great seller if you don't want the clear acrylic on it um, and a little bit lower. And then last for swimsuit that does really well for me is actually called the swimsuit shoe. Real creative, I know. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. This is my number one selling unit. It's the one that um, I'm gonna show you shortly on the Austria, which I think was your first yes. pair of uh -huh. shoes. Yep. Well, but this is the clear unit. It's a four inch heel, has a little um, uh, back strap, and then it has a little bit of acrylic with the nude straps on it. But one thing that is so great about this platform too is it has the full padding all throughout as well as it's lined with suede. So when you line a shoe with suede, you don't slip. Yes. So 
you want to feel very secure on the pageant stage. Absolutely. When you're in they're bearing it all in swimsuits. Exactly. And you're sweating because, yeah, you might be wearing just a bikini, but you're like hot. It's hot backstage. The lights are so hot. So you really do sweat. Even your feet are sweating. So true. And I hear that all the time. And so many times, speaking of like, uh, one of the things I hear all the time is girls, I've signed so many pairs of shoes at pageant from shows or whatever, um, which I'm always flattered to do. But uh, there, some girls will be embarrassed, like, oh, my God, it's so dirty. I wear them all the time. I'm like, girl, I want to hear that. I want to yes. know you're at every pageant. So <laughs> of course. I don't see a clean shoe. So ladies, yeah. don't. Okay, one of my favorite shoes, speaking of a dirty shoe, because this um, is used at all my photo shoots and stuff like that because it just, the girls say it's also very comfortable. This is uh, the Stardom. And it's one of my favorite shoes, um, just because I think every girl should feel like a superstar. So this one has the um, the little Topaz AB crystal swirls on the acrylic. So it has a really good supportive vamp strap, goes up into this beautiful metallic leather um, buckle strap on the little swing back. Oh, so beautiful. it's one of my faves. It's just pretty. Anything with crystals. Yeah, I <laughs> love it. Well, and then last but not least, my best seller of like the 10 years I've been designing shoes is the Austria. Yeah. So it's simple uh, little quarter strap here in the nude leather lined with suede. And then, of course, the gorgeous Swarovski crystals on the two vamp straps. But this is a pageant staple for sure. It's just so pretty on the foot. Definitely. 100%. I agree. Dude. Yes. Oh, that was fun. Ooh, I'm like, I like love them. Like, I remember when I first tried on the Austria to buy it, I remember feeling that suede and being like, this feels like a slipper. Like, I was like, am I Cinderella? Because <laughs> like, it is it's yeah. so comfortable. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, it is so super comfortable. And you're right about it not being slippery. And that is huge to worry, especially in evening gown and in swimsuit when you're walking on uh, stairs. Oftentimes in pageants, there are so many stairs, even if there's only three to walk down, it's definitely something to be mindful of, that that's an easy place that when you're lifting your foot and putting it down that out onto another stair, the shoe, if it's slippery, is going to easily just kind of fall off of your foot. That's how women slip. So yeah, yeah that suede is, is really, really huge. So, wow. It can be, a yeah. Definitely, yeah, that was fun. So now I also know while we're on show and tell, uh, I know you've got a couple gowns to introduce us to as well. I believe these are ones that are going to be in stores in August. Is that right? These actually are way, they're not even from the next um, new collection that we'll have in stores in August is our fall collection oh. and actually it's the end of July. So I actually am going to, going to give you guys a super sneak peek of gowns that are going to be in the stores this fall, but you're going to to wait a little bit longer because they're in my spring 2018 collection so i'll show them at market in august okay they'll start shipping to retailers in october oh okay. so you guys a way advanced yeah this is good planning for your pageants for the end of the year and next year this is great cool let's take a look all right, so I, I decided um, since we were going to show you guys a couple of pieces and just know, guys, everybody on this podcast, that my retailers and the world will really not see these until like August and then shipped in the stores after that. So oh, this yeah. is a big deal that I'm even showing you. This is a big deal. I know. And, you know, yeah. it's it's like coming from a pageant perspective, you know, some women don't even want their dresses, anyone to see their dresses before they walk out onto stage. And you are giving us this opportunity months and months and months in advance of them actually being even in the store, let alone on stage. So thank you for this honor. This is exciting. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm going to give you guys the full scoop as cool. well. Okay. Let's do it. Guys, I wanted to do evening gowns because that's what I love. That's another reason why I chose spring collection stuff because my fall collection is more homecoming, which is short. Uh, but I do have some pageant gowns in there, but I don't know. I'm just in love with these two new samples. So I hope you guys love them as much as I do. So Ooh. the first one is this beautiful white fall gown. And I'm going to get you a little closer. Yeah, to it. let's. And it, oh, wow. It's off the shoulder. And it is really quite gorgeous. Embroidery and... It also has pockets, which is awesome. Oh, that is awesome. Yes. Wow. 
It has beautiful beadwork. I don't know if oh, you can see this. Yes, I'm holding we can. Oh, it's shining. But oh, it's this is lovely. Tons of metallic Alonson lace and then beautiful, beautiful beadwork. And one thing you'll notice is this tiny little bit of a basque waist. And as a designer, we do this not only because it's a classic um, line, but it extends the torso a little bit in the front, but then raises back up. So it gives a virtual illusion of your torso being longer, but then your legs being longer from the side. So it's just a little, you know, designer detail um, that really makes for a beautiful, uh, yes. a really beautiful look. And then the back of this one as well is also dropped a little bit. Can you guys see yes. that? Yes, yeah. So really great construction and um, lots of boning. One thing I put into my pageant dresses is I put lots of construction, but this will still be in that prom price point that's very affordable as well. I haven't fully priced this one out yet, but I think it's going to be somewhere about five fifty, six hundred in the store. Oh, okay, yeah. so, so not bad, not yeah, crazy. That's expensive. great. And when you see all of these crystals in person, you will fully understand yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then, okay, so the other gown that I was going to show you guys is this beauty here. And this is a mixture of hand beaded lace as well as, let me see if I can turn this around. I'm wow, I get love this back. detail. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. Now I can, now okay, I can cool. see. Oh, good. Yeah. So, really, really beautiful train oh, on this yes. one. And the whole bottom is stretch velvet. Ooh. And top, I'm also going to see if I can turn up like a little bit for you guys. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So, great beadwork on this one. All hand beaded yeah. lace on the top. And then this beautiful crystal trim. Yeah here but it has a really spectacular back too oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah i, I want to see turn this mannequin oh i see oh wow so oh here. this is great oh my I, gosh this is so jonathan came <laughs> like, i know oh I, my I, gosh i love detail aesthetic is like really glam really sexy elegant um, and you know, I just feel like the woman's body is just beautiful and, um, should be just adored and respected. And my favorite, uh, my favorite quote from Mae West, actually, I've kind of stolen it for myself is it's better to be looked over than overlooked. Oh, oh my gosh. That's good. Well, thanks. You know, that's I, I kind of love so that's, that's yeah. the two gowns I'm sharing with you guys. I will tell you, this one also comes in royal blue with all of this gold embroidery and topaz. And then this one is going to come in white velvet as well as all white. Uh, the top of the bodice is white lace over nude. And then it also comes in black and then also royal blue that is oh. out of this world. Oh, I bet. Oh my gosh, wow. These are truly stunning. Oh my goodness. Thank you wow. so much. Yeah. So you guys, you guys love them as much as I do. They're, they're as pretty as they are on here. They are 10 times prettier in person. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yes. Oh my gosh. And on too. You know, it's like one thing to see it on a mannequin, see it on. And that's just. Oh, that's really where the magic happens is when you put them on. And that's, you know, that's what I tell girls is. A lot of times I don't design dresses to just look good on the hanger. I build the construction on the inside so that um, so that you your body is transformed and you look and feel just so oh, good. So but so important. I like my dresses on because sometimes they're not a hanger dress. Then you get them on and you feel that construction and what I kind of built it to do. And that's when your waist is like, oh my gosh, my my waist looks like this. Yeah, so, so true. Oh. One of the first gowns that I wore of yours was a jersey knit. And on the hanger, I was like, uh, my friend Ronnie was suggesting this gown to me. And I was like, I don't know. Like, that. that's like a little. And again, put it on. And I was like, whoa, I'm sold instantly. I was like, this is the one. Oh, it's great. Yeah, so you're right. Big difference between hanger and human. <laughs> yeah. 
So true. So I, when when I think of a Jonathan Cain gown, I want to share with you a sort of my perspective of your designs. And then I would love to hear what is it that you believe is your perspective of your designs? Like, how do you describe them? To me, and when I explain them to my clients, I say that a Jonathan Cain gown is like the most amazing, beautiful gown you've ever seen that just fits so well and moves like a bubble on stage. And then at some point along the movement process, there's a oh, wow, surprise that's just like, ah, oh, that's, that's incredible. Like there's always that wow factor. Sometimes it can be something that is just like the back on that gown you would never expect. Or even like the red gown I saw that even just the trim, the lining around everything is like, oh, I love that. That's just beautiful. You know, the pockets on the gold one, the off the shoulder, you just don't, don't expect of a sleeved gown. Like, so anyway, I'm, I'm curious to know, what do you feel like? How would you describe your designs? Yeah, no, thank you. You know, and that's, that's something that uh, my team and I have really been kind of working on is our branding and what makes us different and why do I design the way I do? And there's so many, uh, there's in this exercise of working on all of our branding documents and all that from core values to mission statement, vision statement, my story personally, the brand story, all those things is um, it really comes back down to my joy of how I make my feel, whether it's prom girl, pageant girl, a red carpet, well, whatever. Um, so really, I try to build the garment to be the most flattering proportions that I can. One of the things that I love is work, and I love beadwork, um, and I love construction. So when you put those things together and you really think about fit, the construction, and the movement, and the sparkle of the gown, there's something about, um, the sparkle for me is the extra added thing. And that's why a lot of my stuff it because sometimes I think that's like a home run. When you have the fit and the construction and the flattering silhouette, when you add that one little wow factor, and sometimes it may be one little burst of beating on the back only. So when you turn around, I'm always trying to think of what is that one thing that's going to be a wow in a dress. One of my best selling dresses right now, just silk chiffon, and it's style 7010. Ladies, look it up. It's all silk chiffon. It's been on every red carpet from the Grammys, the CMA Awards, the CMT Awards, um, the ACM Awards. It's been everywhere. So I'm kind of like over it at this point. But <laughs> we, we have redesigned it and recreated it for this next collection. So stay tuned. You're okay. going to want to see. I think I leaked a, a video of it on my Instagram. It's in a black and white ombre. So check it out. It's oh, cool. good. There's, I'll link. I'll make sure we link to that in the show notes. I'll find it. There, yeah. So people can see other colors. Yeah. There's other colors that are coming in that dress too, but it's magical in the ombre. But anyway, check 7010 out, but that dress has no beading. And because of the flow and there's over 15 yards of fabric in that dress and it's one layer of chiffon. <laughs> So there's tons of fabric. So that dress, the movement is what gives that wow and the effortless, simple beauty. But there's always something I try to have as a little wow factor. And that really comes from uh, from my pageant girls. You know, when you're up there with 50, 75 other young women that are smart, beautiful, prepared, talented, you've got to have something that at least makes you feel unique and different and powerful. And that's what I try to put in my gowns is that extra little uh. <laughs> I love it, the extra uh. That's good. <laughs> yeah, oh, so fun, great, good. So uh, help me understand this because there's sometimes as a woman competing in a pageant, it's so difficult for us to wrap our minds around how can a man get us? like. How, how, how do you even understand my insecurities that I'm, that I'm experiencing with too small a bust? And then, you know, when you have too small of a bust growing up your whole life, like I did, that was a story I told myself about not being enough and not feeling valuable or, or not feeling like a fit in or comparison, all these things. And I'm like, ah, but how as a man, can you, can you even bear to begin to understand me? And then not only to just understand, but then to design a gown that still makes me feel just stunningly gorgeous. So can you share a little bit of your insights to how did you develop an empathy to really understand women and be able to help them 
feel beautiful and to really like, uh, I guess, to capture what makes a woman truly beautiful? You know what? I, I would have to credit here really um, several people, but mainly the the powerful women in my life, my sisters um, and my mom and my grandmother, because they, you know, they kind of showed me that, uh, you know, what those insecurities look like and what they feel like. And one of the biggest pieces of advice that all my great guy friends or, or my men in my life is just listen. You have to listen and understand. And even if you don't um, fully understand what those insecurities or what those feelings or emotions are, you have to at least listen, process it, and be your authentic self and like really think about how would you feel in that situation? I, I don't know many people that haven't had some type of insecurity at some capacity. And one of the other things that really helped me um, have that empathy is, you know, I mentioned Dolly Parton earlier. Dolly Parton is the one person in my life that taught me at an early age, and I've only met her a few times, but she taught me through the way she ha handles herself and carries herself, that it's okay to be who you are. It's okay to poke fun at yourself. It's okay to um, to live in your own skin and tell your true story, your authentic story of who you are. And um, that didn't come from anywhere else. When I grew up, I was very ashamed of how I looked, how much money my family had, which was not mine, um, you know, where I came from. Dolly's the one person in my life, and it's one that wasn't in my family, to see she can be proud to be where she's from, of her story and her truth. And that really kind of resonated with me from a young child for being that open and honest when a lot of celebrities weren't or not. They were saying how their life was glamorous. Didn't talk about, you know, a bad situation that happened in It's having that human connection, that empathy, that we all have. At the end of the day, our blood is all the same color, whether you're black, white, Asian, female, male, whatever. We're all human and we all have a heart. And that's what you really have to let about your decisions. Uh, how you treat people and how you help. Wow, that's so beautiful. And you're right that we all experience these things. And we all, I like how you described, like, we all have had insecurities of some type. So while yours may not match mine, we still have the same feeling and they still we still experience the world through those in some way. So you're right. And it's amazing how putting on a beautiful dress can really just bring out the beauty of a woman in a way that maybe she's never experienced before. I, I love that you get to experience that on a regular basis, that you get to see women just come to life in their beauty and step into that when they dress in a beautiful gown, you know? It's a pretty magical experience. I will tell you, that's one of the things that really made me fall in love with this industry is I can see a client come in that's having kind of a bad day, but once they step into the account and they get that feeling in that moment, it can literally transform their day. And it's one of those things, even when we're getting dressed in the morning, you know, I know a gown is Event. You're wearing a gown to something really special, prom, a pageant, a wedding, or whatever. Um, but even every day, everybody knows that outfit or that shirt or that accessory that we put on, that when we put it on, we're like, I feel unstoppable. I feel great. And it's just awesome that clothing and fashion can actually do that. And I feel so blessed that I'm able to, uh, to give that to clients every day. And it's what makes me love, love my job much is that um, fashion can really change your, change your feeling, change your mood, change your emotion. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. So what are you working on right now? What's the vision or the next step for your brand? Oh my gosh, we have so much. I feel like we're in like an incubator stage. We've uh -huh. been working on branding, on our business plan, on our marketing. Um, my team is growing here in Nashville. I moved back here in 2012 and we have, you know, set some pretty lofty goals of things we want for our business and um, and the clients we want to serve. And really, the past uh, three months, I would say, I've been going to a lot of branding seminars and workshops and really learning and educating myself. How can I share my brand in the most uh, authentic way and the best way? So it really, uh, one thing that I've learned in this process is, uh, is really, how can I help their people? 
women or uh, anyone that wants to wear gowns or shoes. And uh, one of the things you're going to see for me and my company is a lot of video, a lot more encouraging, empowering um, information out there. My big audacious goal for the company is I want to be number one, not at selling dresses. I want to be the number one designer that is evening wear that empowers women. That's what I care about. That's where, when I, I'm on my death, hopefully in like 100 years or something, um, I hope that that's what he you know. He empowered so many beautiful women. And I really could care less if they mentioned that I have a project or that design dresses. I really kind of want to be known for women and my vehicle for that is going to be through my design and there's a lot of exciting exciting design things that are coming um, in the very near future that that are going to do just that and the message will always be aligned with wow that's beautiful thank you for sharing that and for and for doing that work i just want to take a moment to honor you in what the the work that you're going through to really identify this, to dig through your story, as you mentioned, to come to core values, to have an idea of what is this going to look like? What impact am I going to make on the world that is far greater than just you could do as one individual, that it's going to really have to take your team, as you mentioned, people coming together and your effort in learning what is necessary to empower those women. So I just want to thank you for the work that you're doing. I certainly would be a testimony to one of those who has felt extremely empowered by your presence, never feeling judged, never feeling less than, and always feeling lifted and encouraged by you. So I thank you so much for the work that you're doing, not just for us as individuals, but for women globally and the impact that you're having on all of us to lift us up. So thank you for your work. My pleasure. It, it, it is literally such a pleasure. It's going to bring me to tears here Aww. at this <laughs> So tell me, where can people find you and follow you? What are your favorite social medias? Give me the scoop. Where can people go? Well, that's one of the things that we are building up at this point. Instagram is by far um, probably our most active platform. So definitely follow us on there. It's just Jonathan Kane. Um, and my name's spelled all crazy, so just check out my website, jonathankane.com. The easiest place to follow me on all my social media, which is Twitter, YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, those are the main ones. I'm working on kids. I'm working on Snapchat. It, just give me a moment. I'm, I'm trying to, fig I'm trying to, I, get, trying to figure it all out. I know, man. Snapchat's been tough for me, too. <laughs> It's like one more that I'm like, oh, I got to figure this one out. And I think like, oh, is it worth it? They always disappear. Like, <laughs> I know. I think about my MySpace, which the millennials probably don't even know what that is. But uh, <laughs> well, I think about that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, is it even still out there in the universe somewhere, which I think it is. But anyway, so um, Instagram, Facebook, it's all just Jonathan Kane. Um, the easiest way to follow me on all my social media is just go to my website and there's a social tab right at the top. And Jonathan Kane is J O H N A T H A N K A Y N E dot com. Perfect. I'll make sure First that we. And middle name. A lot of people are confused about that. Name. But Jonathan Kane com, do the socials tab, and you can follow me on all social media. And I'm active on all of it, but Instagram is where it's our baby. It's like... Oh, perfect. Good. I'll make sure that we link all of those in the show notes so that people can just click the link and easily get to all of them. Yeah. Perfect. You're so tech savvy. Oh yeah. I try to do my best. <laughs> so cool. So do you have any final piece of advice that you would like to share with pageant women around the world? You know what? I think the biggest thing is um, just try to help other women, no matter if you're starting, then go in with a great attitude. That's one, one and a willingness to learn. If you're just starting in pageantry, if you have done a few pageants and you're starting to feel like you have the ropes, then help someone else. It's not, it's never bad to help uh, someone else that's trying to, um, to better themselves and take that competition out, even though I think there's something great about healthy competition and just serve other people, help other people. And, um, and then if, if you're a really seasoned, uh, pageant girl, then really think of how can I give back? How can I make a difference? And maybe it's something like what Alicia is doing, where she is helping young women on their journey to um, to be better at interview, to be better in their pageant journey, and to be better as people in our community and 
empowering and love themselves. So I think the biggest thing is really just encouraging people to, I know it sounds so cliche, but really think about other people and the people that have helped you in your life, how that makes you feel. And it's one of those things at the end of the day, um, it, it's just, it's a beautiful feeling. And that karma will absolutely come back to you too. Amen. Couldn't agree more. Wow. Thank you so much, Kane, for being a part of the Win of Pageant podcast. This has been such a delight. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me on, for sure. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So listeners, followers, go follow Jonathan Kane all over social media. Check out the latest and greatest of everything that he's doing. And we will see you on the next Win a Pageant Wednesday. Bye for now. Hey, if you loved that video as much as I did, then would you please give it a thumbs up? I know that Kane would uh, really appreciate that, and so would I. And also share it with anyone that you think would really benefit from this specific episode, because there's so much information in here for especially a new pageant girl or someone that's looking to upgrade their wardrobe. I know that they would really appreciate it as well. Thank you again for watching the Win a Pageant podcast, and I can't wait to see you on the next Win a Pageant Wednesday. Bye for now. Thank you.